Hey everybody, I'm Andrew of the Movie Buff Pains, here with another episode of Andrew's Animation. This is another entry in my Obscurities of Animation series, and I'm really excited to share a few different titles with you today. I have found that some of the titles in animation that I've considered more obscure have actually been ones that have been released by different labels, and I have three to show you today which were actually put out by Shout Factory. And I feel like people don't pay attention as much to some of Shout Factory's regular releases. I know a lot of you out there are in on Scream Factory, which is probably their most successful portion of their label. So I wanted to share with you a few of my favorite titles that I've actually watched so far from Shout Factory's collection. The first one up is A Monster in Paris. This is a 3D French animation film. And this one's actually really cute, in my opinion. It's loosely based off of The Phantom of the Opera, and I do mean loosely based. It's about a flea who grows to the size of a large human and gains the ability to sing. Which, you know, sounds kind of ridiculous, but it is really, it's still really fun to watch. You know, the characters have some dimension to them, they're not totally flat. The couple of songs that are in it are really catchy in my opinion. I would definitely give it a solid 4 out of 5 stars. It's very much fun to watch, definitely something you can watch either with your kids or by yourself. And yeah, just a good one all around. Uh, the animation, you know, isn't totally top notch, but then again, trying to meet up to Disney or DreamWorks standards of animation is pretty lofty, honestly. And in Europe, I feel like they put a lot more focus on story and character over the animation itself, which I appreciate, honestly. I feel like in America, everything's about trying to be as flashy and up-to-date as possible, when a lot more should be focused on the content over the looks. If you're just going to put it in pretty packaging and still have, you know, a pile of crap on the inside, then what's the point? But yeah, I found that European animation a lot of times is more about the quality of the content rather than the animation itself, which is why we still get so many varying styles of animation from over there as well, which I really appreciate because there are definitely some forms of animation that have become kind of a lost art in lieu of doing everything 3D. I'm getting a little off topic though. I love 3D animation, but I do feel like it's a bit overused in today's world. We should be trying to branch out and do different forms that are a bit more artistic in my opinion. The next one I have to show you is Jack and the Cuckoo Clock Heart. This movie is very interesting for a number of reasons. First off, this is another musical sort of movie, and much more so I think than Monster in Paris, honestly. What's interesting about this movie is the backstory, actually. Jack and the Cuckoo Clock Heart is based off of an album, of all things. The movie is made by the original artist, too. His name is, I'm gonna butcher it, I'm sure, it's a French name, Matthias Mal Malzou? Malsu, something like that. <laughs> and he is a musician, and he created this album, and each and the songs told a story of this young man who, when he was born, had a frozen heart, and his heart had to be replaced with a cuckoo clock to be able to keep him alive. And you know, the songs tell all the progressing story of this young man. Matthias also went on to write a novelization of his own album, and the movie also contains much of the music of that album and which the characters take on singing the, those songs. It is an intriguing movie to say the least. Very interesting mixing the music and story together as they do. And at first glance, you know, it seems a little odd, I would say. If you like anything definitely like steampunk or a little Tim Burton-esque, I would definitely recommend checking this movie out. It is definitely worth a watch. Again, it is, it's odd, but it is really fun. I couldn't take my eyes off the screen when I saw it for the first time. It was just so unique to me, and I really do enjoy it. I give that one four stars as well. It is such a fun watch, and again, I mean, the music is enchanting, and the 
animation is, you know, nothing super special, but it is still fun to look at, especially for the world that it is set within. And yeah, just another one definitely worth checking out. The last one I have to show you is probably the one I'm most excited for, honestly. I think this one's the best of the three, in my opinion. And this movie is called Long Way North. This is another French film, and it's very, very well done, honestly. One, the animation style, if the cover is anything to give you an idea, is much more 2D but it's very colorful and very well rendered. It is a beautiful piece to watch. The company that made this is actually working on another movie that's supposed to be touring the festival circuit soon, I think. But this movie, I knew nothing about it when it came out on Blu-ray. And so I, you know, I was like, it's animated, it's Blu-ray, I wanna have it. And so I picked it up and it is, so good. It's the story of a young girl who decides to go looking for her grandfather who was an Arctic explorer. And so it's her journey of trying to go find him up in the north. And it is very, very well done all around. I, li I really enjoyed the characters. The animation is beautiful. Again, I really appreciate when animation is in 3D. I love to see what creative choices the people will make in concerns to the look of the film. And it is really beautiful to watch, honestly. And it is a very character-driven story, too, because there's not a ton of action. It's literally this girl just traveling by boat to the north trying to find her grandfather. It's not. It's way more character-driven than action-driven, in my opinion, and I love that about it. I love when they do that. It's definitely my favorite of these three, probably, actually, when I think about it. I would give this one four stars as well. I know I've said that about all three of them, but honestly, I really enjoy all three of them pretty darn well. But yeah, I think Long Way North is probably my favorite of those three, and I definitely recommend viewing that if you can. If you can get your hands on it at all, it is definitely worth the pick up in my opinion. In fact, any of these are worth the pick up in my opinion. All three of these are definitely worth watching. With A Monster in Paris and Jack and the Cuckoo Clock Heart, you get a more musical tendency with them, which is really enjoyable. And it is they are just fun and, you know, maybe a little more lighthearted for the most part. And Long Way North is really good just for the fact that it's a much more dramatic piece, which you don't get a lot of dramatic animation. It is very unique in that aspect, I feel. Well, that's all I've got for you today. I know these videos can be a little short. Sorry that I'm not doing more extensive reviews on these at all, but I really wanna show people just some of the outskirts of animation, honestly, because we've all seen so much of the mainstream, I th and these kinds of titles are so worth, you know, giving your attention to. And I'll definitely look forward to, you know, looking through my collection and finding more of, you know, what possibilities there are outside of Disney and DreamWorks and the other big companies. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope I, you know, like I said, stirred up some interest in the titles I showed off. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications and we will see you on the next one.